Hey everybody, welcome back to Facilitation Fridays. I'm Kalani Das, and I want to address an issue uh, because I tour around a lot. I travel all over the world, I teach, and I see other people teaching, I see other people giving workshops. And um, I had some thoughts about how we can do a better job as educators, as facilitators, you know, whether you're in the helping profession, some sort of therapy or therapeutic profession, or you're in education, or you're in recreation, the idea of facilitation is the same. Facilitation means to make something easier. I want to get back to that because that's an important concept, to make something easier. Here's the thing. I've been watching you guys, not all of you, um, but I've been watching some people who call themselves facilitators. And look, there's lots of different styles. I'm not here to bash anyone. I'm not here to, you know, to cast uh, shade on any particular style. What I do want to do is point out uh, that we need to examine our own philosophies. We need to examine our own methodologies to make sure that we're not leaving something on the table when it comes to facilitating people's creative potential, their expression, their sense of autonomy or volition, you know, their sense that they are in charge, that they can create and they can share. And so what I'm going to do is give you some ideas about how you, if you want to facilitate things, and this could go for a conversation as well. This doesn't have to be just about music. Uh, if you want to facilitate anything or even think about how you relate to people, how you converse, how you teach, how you lead, how you manage, um, then this would be a good uh, discussion for you to have for yourself. So um, I'm going to use one example as something that I think we need to question, and that is the idea of leader leading people as a form of facilitation. And is leading people or tasking people actually facilitating or is it something else? So here's the, here's the scenario. And this is what I've noticed is that some people will uh, give people specific things to do, like play this or go like this, right? Do this rhythm, play loud, play soft, stop, start, you know, and there's a lot of conducting involved. There might be a lot of just specifics and that'll start and then there'll be a specific thing and another specific thing and another specific thing. And basically what's happening there is the facilitator is taking people through a specific sequence of tasks to be completed. Now, does that mean People are not having fun? No. I mean, people could have fun doing things that they haven't done before. Uh, it doesn't have so much to do with whether people are doing it or not, or whether they're having fun or not. The critical uh, point here is, are they being creative? Are their ideas being used as material for what, what the group is doing? or even an individual? Um, are they being included? Are their ideas being included? And, um, and are they doing something that's sort of native to them? In other words, or are they having to figure out, you know, how to do somebody else's thing, somebody else's idea? So I say no. <laughs> A lot of the time, people, if you're just tasking people with do this, do this, do this, do this, and follow me, you know, it, that creates a very clear leader-follower relationship. And I've talked about this a little bit when I talked about conducting, uh, let's say, in a drumming setting, drum circle setting, and how you have to really be careful about using conducting, and especially calling conducting facilitating, because those are two different things. So here's a few questions that you can ask yourself to make sure you're not falling into that. I'm going to call it a trap. I'm going to go out on a limb and call that the, leader, the leading trap or the facilitation trap where we think or we, you know, think we're facilitating when we're actually not. We're actually just tasking people. And I don't want you to fall into that because it, you can do better. And here's, here's how you can do better. First of all, when you're with a group, and I wrote this in my book, Together in Rhythm, you never want to waste all of the, the, the people there Every single person in a group is a creative person. 
They all have ideas. They all have something to offer. So you always want to be, number one, observing what people are doing. If somebody is doing something differently, let's say you give people an, uh, a task to do, but they're doing it a little bit differently, instead of correcting them, which would be potentially embarrassing or shaming them, use that. So you want to, number one, see what's happening in the group. Look, you have to be an observer. Look around, see what people are doing, and then if people are doing things that are a little bit different, then you can point that out or you can imitate them, and that gives you automatic variety. It also, more importantly, I think, validates that person, and it includes their ideas. So you never want to waste the ideas. Let's say you have a group of 10 people. That's 10 brains. That's 10 hearts. That's 10 creative spirits that you have access to, don't waste it by just only doing for the group what you planned. All right, that's a number one, you know, so look around and see what's happening. Uh, number two, uh, you want to always give, almost always, not always always, but in general, uh, give a vague prompt instead of a specific command. So instead of saying, everybody do this, you know, everybody go like this, right? You might say, pretend you're cold and you need to warm up, okay? Let's see what you do when you're cold. Now, some people might do this, some people might do this, some people might do this, some people might, there, you're gonna have a variety of things happening and that's okay. So again, if you give a vague prompt, just a prompt, not a command, uh, a prompt would be, you know, move like your favorite animal. Uh, do your favorite, you know, fighting pose. Do your favorite champion pose. Uh, you know, giving, giving something conceptual but not specific. Or, you know, play like a horse galloping um, instead of play this rhythm, all right? Because if I say play this rhythm, now people have to really focus, A, on me. Two, they have to... Uh, I just switched from letters to numbers right there. That's okay. <laughs> uh, B or two, they have to figure something out. Now they've got a puzzle, like what is Kalani doing? Now I have to do it. Now I'm, I'm like in school, all right? So if you're facilitating creativity, you don't wanna put people in school. You wanna give them permission to play. So instead of saying play what I'm doing or do what I'm doing, you can give people a prompt that is just a suggestion, it's an idea. Then see what people are doing. And then third, here's another thing you can do, is that you can shine light on different people in your group. And when everybody's doing their, let's say, drum like a horse rhythm, and chances are, you know, you'll have a similar rhythm, maybe everybody will start doing something similar or the same, that can happen. But if somebody's doing something different than the group, then you can say, hey, everybody, let's drum like David. And now go back to your own thing. And those of you that have come to my workshops know that that's a very common uh, strategy that I use is I'll give people a, a general prompt and then I'll say, okay, hey, everybody, let's do what uh, Sue is doing. Let's move like uh, Jeff or let's play like Suzanne. All right, and then we can do that that does two things. A, it gives everybody more ideas because they're going to, for a moment, go into, you know, the shoes of somebody else, into the rhythm of somebody else, and do something that they might not have ordinarily done. So that's expanding their horizon, right? It's expanding their repertoire. And number two, it does something very cool, which is it honors and validates members of your group as leaders as co-leaders and that's really facilitating you know it's not necessarily facilitating for me to just task people from start to finish with things i want them to do or that i think of um, you know unless they know absolutely nothing but i just don't believe that groups know absolutely nothing i think a group of people even if they don't have experience with music i think they know you know they have ideas they they know how to play and they can try things out and I can help shape their ideas. 
uh, into something perhaps a little more musical if they're struggling. But of course people have things to share. And so you want to use that. You want to honor the people in your group and make it easier for them to share, make it easier for them to connect with each other and elevate everyone as a co-leader, a co-creator, and really give ownership of the group to the group and not be the conductor or the director. Okay, so I, I hope this is helpful, whether you're facilitating music or you're facilitating a conversation, uh, whether it's in business or it's at home or it's with a loved one, one-on-one uh, -on -one or whatever the situation is, these are facilitative techniques. These are facilitative strategies. And my hope is that they will help you help the people um, that you want to help to feel more validated, to feel more, uh, to feel free, to feel creative and to have fun and enjoy being together and playing music and being in community. Okay, so if these are good ideas, if you think they're great ideas, or even good ideas, <laughs> you can give this video a thumbs up, leave your comments below, and I'm gonna carry on this line uh, over at patreon.com because I do appreciate the patrons who support World Drum Club. If you're not a patron, please join and chip in you know, a little tip so we can keep doing more and I can do more for you. That's at patreon.com slash Kalani. All right, leave your helpful comments below. Thanks for doing all you do in music and I'll see you all in a future video.